Okay, the recording is on. Welcome everyone and good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining the class BC 308, Revelation and Daniel. This is our first lecture actually after almost a month of the college reopening. I apologize for all the breaks and uh, for us not getting started earlier, but uh, we will do our best to uh, cover all the all that we are supposed to cover and have a wonderful time okay let's uh, please pray together and get started may i request somebody to uh, pray with us as a class and we'll start anyone can pray can i pray Yes, Sudan, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, for all your good works in us, Lord. Lord, as we are studying the book of Revelation in Daniel, let the revelation of Lord Jesus Christ be revealed to us. Lord, we thank you for all things. Let everything become easy to understand and receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we are ready to start our course on Revelation and Daniel. So what we're going to do is uh, quite straightforward, which is we're going to read uh, verse by verse uh, the prophetic scriptures, Daniel and then uh, Daniel and Revelation. We're going to read it. And then we're going to understand what the scriptures are teaching us. So you remember in our second year, we did a, a, a course on the end times. There in that course, we uh, were giving an overview, uh, an outline of the sequence of events, the timeline of events. So that was um, our objective in that course. Uh, we couldn't you know, necessarily go into verse by verse and read everything and explain everything. But that course served a purpose in helping us set out some sort of a sequence of events and say, okay, this is how we see the end time events unfolding. So that, that course served that purpose. And also to answer some questions about, you know, when would certain events take place and the signs of the end, end times and so on. But in the course that we are doing now in the third year on Revelation Daniel, our objective is to actually read the text and then try to understand it. Right. I don't know if my mic went off. Um, okay. Um, you can hear me, right? Everyone can hear me. Okay. So although in the course, we, you know, we, we call it Revelation Daniel, we'll study Daniel first, and then you will come into Revelation. And uh, we are going to focus on the prophetic scripture. So in the book of Daniel, there is a um, little bit of historical record. Uh, we will not, you know, we'll not uh, be reading those portions. We'll be mainly focusing on the prophetic part of the book of Daniel, the prophetic scriptures. So we'll be reading those prophetic scriptures and then understanding them. And it is very, very amazing, right? So let's get started. I will um, share the notes and then we will, you know, read the scriptures together. Uh, one we will read the, uh, oh, I have to open the PDF. Uh, we will read the scriptures together and uh, go through it, go through Daniel, chapter by chapter. So let me share. All right. So Revelation and Daniel, our course uh, objective is very simple. We're going to read through Daniel, read through Revelation, and then we will connect a few other passages. You know, we'll connect passages from Isaiah, Ezekiel, Joel, Zechariah. We will connect them to Daniel and Revelation as we read through. Okay, so that's what we will do. And I've, I've shared a few reference books. Uh, these are, again, quite uh, detailed. If you're interested in reading, you're welcome to read them. So 
let's get started with the book of Daniel. A little bit of introduction, background. Daniel, uh, the word, the name Daniel uh, means God is judge. And he was there about 600 years um, before Christ. So uh, he, he ministered around that time. And uh, uh, he, uh, Daniel lived to be, uh, lived very long. So yeah, about 80 some years. And what is interesting is Daniel's life record in the book of Daniel starts from the time when the Jews were taken out of Jerusalem and they were brought into Babylon as captives. So this was under Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king who came, who conquered Jerusalem and he took people away to Babylon. So Daniel's life begins with that uh, captivity, being deported, taken out of Jerusalem. And then he, he lives actually through three different empires. So there was the Babylonian, the Medes, and the Persians, three different empires. So he lives through them. And so there is a little bit of historical information recorded for us in the book of Daniel. But the book of Daniel, especially the second part of the book, focuses mainly on the visions that God had given Daniel. And these visions were about future events, about things to come. Now, very interesting is even the Lord Jesus in Matthew, the 24th chapter, he referred to Daniel the prophet. And he referred to what Daniel spoke about. And we will see this. And he, Jesus quoted from Daniel chapter 9 uh, in Matthew 24, 15. Daniel chapter 9, 26 and 27. So the Lord Jesus himself quoted from the book of Daniel. He, he, he pointed out what Daniel prophesied. And he said, you know, when you see that happen, you know the end is near. You know, So the Lord Jesus, uh, if you want to say it, validated, authenticated Daniel's prophecy. That is amazing. That is amazing. Now, about that time period itself, there were prophets who preceded Daniel, that is Isaiah and Jeremiah. Isaiah, the prophet, he prophesied that, uh, you know, he prophesied about the fact that uh, Israel, the Jews, would be taken away into captivity. And he also prophesied that some of these Jews would serve as officers of the king of Babylon. Isaiah also prophesied about the fact that the Jews would be sent back to Jerusalem, the land. Um, uh, he called by name King Cyrus, who was the Persian king, who issued the decree that the Jews should go back to Jerusalem. So Isaiah, preceding Daniel, prophesied about the whole captivity and the return to Jerusalem. He prophesied. Jeremiah also prophesied about Nebuchadnezzar. He prophesied about the 70-year Babylonian captivity. So these were people who preceded Daniel. So when Daniel came along, he, he knew what these prophets had spoken, what they had spoken. You know, he knew. And that was part of his prayer, as we will see later on uh, in Daniel 9 and 10. Daniel prayed that, you know, what Jeremiah had prophesied, that at the end of 70 years, the people should be sent back to Jerusalem. Daniel would pray those prayers. Like I said earlier, Daniel served in the, uh, in, 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 uh, four different kings or three different empires. Um, the Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, they are the Babylonians. Then Darius were the Medes. And then Cyrus were the Persians. Three different world empires or four different kings. Now these two kings were from the same empire, the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. And Darius, and then came Cyrus. So he served in these four different kings. So um, that, that that's an amazing thing that a Jewish man would have a very important position in the empires 
of these kinds of kings that they would respect him and hold him in high regard um, just so again as part of the background uh, Daniel it's placed in scripture it's the last book uh, among the major prophets uh, Isaiah Jeremiah Daniel major prophets um, the purpose of the book of Daniel is both historical and revelatory it historical records what happened to the Jewish people while they were in captivity uh, in Babylon and a little bit about what happened during that time but most of it is revelatory in character meaning it is speaking about future events it records the prophecies uh, or the visions God gave Daniel about things to come starting from his time on way into the future into the millennium and beyond so it's a huge time span that God gave revelation to concern, uh, concerning about Daniel um, okay let me just see I think somebody raised a hand or something say go ahead sorry pastor sorry to um, um, Bojin I was just gonna ask that what was the was the basis of um, um, Daniel being a major prophet uh, what was the basis for minor and major? Is it the content of the prophecy or? Oh uh, yeah, so uh, we would look at it from two things. One is the content of what they prophesied and it's also the significance of their prophetic ministry. So when you look at Isaiah, Jeremiah and Daniel, we see that, uh, of course, the, the uh, their uh, the content of what they prophesied, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel, prophesied and foretold of many things yet to come. Example: If you look at Isaiah, he speaks about the com the birth of the Messiah, the death of the Messiah. He speaks about the millennium. He speaks about new heavens, new earth. I mean, it's all you know. So there's heavy content in their prophecy. Secondly, is also the significance of their ministry. Their ministries, these men, their ministries spanned large periods of time. Like we were saying, Daniel, uh, he lived well into the 80s. And, you know, um, if, if he, um, uh, uh, his, the prophetic experiences uh, began from his early youth, as you will see in Daniel chapter 2, and then went on to, you know, maybe a span of almost, 50 years 50 to 60 yeah 50 to 60 years so this that these were very significant prophetic ministries unlike um all the minor prophets who you know not only the content of what the prophet was was small but they were there for very brief periods of time prophesying at particular junctures mainly when the jews were sent back to uh, the land when they were involved in the rebuilding of the temple, uh, as in the case of uh, Zechariah and Haggai and so on. And then towards the end, of just before the start of the 400-year silent period, that's Malachi. So they were very brief in their prophecies. So, And they were mainly, many of them were mainly calling Israel back into repent, back to God. Uh, you don't find too much other than Zechariah. You don't find too many of them pointing way out into the future uh, to foretell coming events. So you find that difference in the content of their prophecy. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good question. Let's go back now uh, to just the introduction. We're doing an introduction to Daniel. So the other interesting thing about Daniel, which which is actually the interesting part of the Old Testament is that the, there is a portion of the book of Daniel in the or, originally written in Aramaic. The rest of the entirety of the Old Testament is in Hebrew, but there is a portion in Aramaic, and that entire Aramaic portion is in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapters 2 to 7, between 2 and 7. And the reason is because that was the language used by the Babylonians. And that was a time period 
when the Jews were in exile, they were living there with the Babylonians. And uh, so that part of both historical and prophetic, uh, mainly historical content and a little bit of prophetic content, is captured in Aramaic, in the language of the people among whom they were living. Right, so that's kind of an interesting, you know, interesting note about the Old Testament. The entirety of the Old Testament is in Hebrew. There's a small portion Aramaic, and that small portion is in the Book of Daniel, chapters two to seven, simply because that was the time the Jews were living in exile in Babylon, and that was a language that was being used at that time. Um, some just interesting ways of looking at the book of Daniel, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, and this is very easy to observe, is that the book of Daniel, the first six chapters in the book of Daniel are more historical in nature. That means this is what happened while Daniel and his friends were in exile in Babylon, and this is what happened to the people. Okay, historical. There is, of course, some prophetic, which we will see in chapter two, very important. But then the second half of the book of Daniel, chapter 7 to 12, is fully prophetic. And it's amazing. It's, it's like we said, looking way into the future, all the way into the millennium and, and beyond. So it is very easy to divide the book into these two parts. Just by looking, just when you read through the book of Daniel, it becomes very obvious. There's a historical part, and then there's a completely prophetic part uh, in the book of Daniel. Now, other people, you know, uh, just, just for information, other people may divide the book in different ways. And you, know, you we can definitely look at other ways to divide the book. Like we said, they, uh, they can do it as an, okay, Daniel 1 is an introduction, a Daniel Two to seven is the Aramic part of the book. Uh, Daniel three is, I mean, the third part is really talking about uh, Israel, the, uh, the nation of Israel in, in relation to the Gentiles. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, one way of di dividing the book because the prophetic part of the book is specifically dealing with Israel versus other world empires that are going to come and what God is going to do. You know, so, so you can divide the book in that way. If and some people may do it like that, but the easiest way to divide it is just with the obvious way. Chapters one to six are historical, seven to twelve prophetic. Very simple, and it's very, very apparent when we read the book of Daniel. Now, again, just a piece of information is the book of Daniel was never questioned. The authenticity of the book of Daniel um, was never questioned. Uh, up until the third century AD, that means when you come in to 300 years later, you know. And um, uh, so people knew the authenticity of, of the book, they accepted it because, hey, historically it is very authentic, uh, all the historical details are valid, and, you know, things that were said were valid. But there were people, and maybe they did it intentionally, we don't know the motivation. Uh, who attacked the book. Yeah, sometimes people intentionally attack the Bible. They want to prove, disprove the Bible and try to create things. So uh, most notable of the attacks against the book of Daniel came around the third century uh, when there was a pagan Platonist who claimed that, you know, this book was forgery, not genuine, trying to question its authenticity in terms of the you know it's being part of the bible uh they shouldn't be uh rejecting the detailed prophecy saying no no you know it's not possible for somebody to prophesy like this in such detail uh therefore it is just somebody who wrote it backwards you know prophecy is telling history in advance so he couldn't accept the fact that there's such amazing detailed prophecy so he said, no, 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 this is somebody writing retrospectively and claiming it to be prophecy, things like that. Uh, rejecting these miracles that we see in the book of Daniel. We know how the Jewish people, their lives were preserved multiple times um, 
in the time of Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, not refusing to bow to the golden image and the fire in the Dan Daniel and the lion's den, just uh, rejecting that these things ha actually happened, uh, you know, causing, um, qu questioning these things, trying to point out problems in language and text and uh, uh, claiming historical inaccuracies but none of these things have stood you know the what i'm just saying that they were an attempt was made to question the book of daniel but none of these things have stood uh, they've all been disproved and rejected so nobody actually holds to these uh, attempts now the biggest challenge is i mean with the book of daniel is the interpretation because especially when we come from when you come into the prophetic part everything or i should say almost everything is given in very uh, figurative language and the figures the pictures that are used are um, not what we are normally accustomed to as we all are aware, if you've read Daniel, the prophetic images that he sees, you know, like a lion and a bear and a ram and a goat and 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 uh, all those pictures um, uh, is very difficult when you read it in the first instant. And it's like, what is he seeing? You know, what is all this? But actually, the keys to understanding all of this is in the book of Daniel itself. That's the beautiful part. And that's what we're going to see. That actually, these things are not difficult to understand because in the book of Daniel itself is the interpretation of these difficult images, that the pictures that Daniel records. So, when we read about these images, we shouldn't be alarmed. We just have to read it very carefully because in the text of the book, of the scriptures, in Daniel, there is the interpretation of what these images are. So that's the inter approach we are going to take. We recognize that interpreting Daniel at a surface level seems very difficult but we also recognize that the meaning the interpretation of all of what daniel is seeing is right there in the book itself and it's very very interesting now the advantage we have today is we have additional scriptures meaning we have what as uh, you know, of course Isaiah and Jeremiah but before Daniel they wrote we have those scriptures we have what others wrote uh, Zechariah and then we have what Jesus said then we have what Paul the Apostle wrote in Thessalonians and then we have what John received as in the book of Revelation so we have such a big advantage that subsequent to Daniel there was more prophetic scriptures most prophetic scriptures have been given to us and we can put all that together and interpret the book of daniel so we have a big advantage and we must learn to do that and when we do that things become very very clear we have a lot of scripture to put together and understand the book of daniel so we are not going to interpret the book of daniel only by the uh, interpretation given in, within the book which is very clear but we're also going to see additional prophetic utterances concerning the end times which makes which further clarifies what is given to us in the book of daniel another interesting observation in the book of daniel is the theology the revelation of god that we see in daniel we see throughout the book how God was at work in and through the Jewish people. From the very first chapter, we begin to see how God imparted knowledge and skill 
to these four Hebrew boys, Daniel and his three friends, God is at work. We see how God, chapter 2, how God reveals, God is revealing something to a pagan king, Nebuchadnezzar, in a dream, how God empowers Daniel to interpret it. We see Daniel himself revealing, receiving visions. We see God bringing supernatural protection in chapter 4 and chapter 6 to these Hebrew boys. Uh, we see in Daniel chapter 7 um, uh, an amazing picture of the throne room that explains, or I would say, that reveals to us the Trinity. We see, Daniel says, I see the ancient, and we will read it uh, later on, I see the ancient of days, God the Father. I see the Son of Man, God, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal word. And of course, it's the Holy Spirit in Daniel giving him this vision. So we see the Trinity revealed to us there in Daniel chapter 7. The theology of the book of Daniel is amazing. It's actually unveiling God to us. You know, see so the ancient of days, we see the Son of Man and the Holy Spirit giving this revelation. So when the Lord Jesus comes and he begins his ministry and he begins to use the term Son of Man, in the minds of the Jewish people, it's a very powerful thing because for them, that's the term Daniel used to talk about the one who stood next to the ancient of days and to whom all the authorities in the kingdoms were given. And here comes this carpenter from Nazareth and he's referencing himself as son of man. You know, so that's, that is, it, it shocks the Jewish mind. How could somebody use that title that Daniel used for someone in the, in the Godhead, along with the ancient of days, to whom all the authority is going to be given? And Jesus keeps saying, when you see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, when you see the Son of Man coming in the glory of his kingdom, he's talking to himself, and he's referencing Daniel 7, the Son of Man. You know? so. The theology in the book of Daniel is, is really powerful. And then you come to Daniel chapter 12. He talks, talks about God sitting uh, as the judge, you know, and everybody's standing before God. So uh, there is this unveiling of God in the book of Daniel through both the historical and the prophetic scriptures. And it's beautiful just to trace all of that in the book of Daniel. Now, a, a little bit about the history that we are going to see in the book of Daniel. Now, for us, it is history, but for Daniel, some of it was still future. So Daniel was living, uh, let's say, he started off his, his life and ministry somewhere here. Okay. So this was um, when Daniel. Daniel was alive initially, initially, and of course he lived through the Medo-Persian Empire. So before the Babylonian Empire, there were the Assyrians. The Assyrians had come and they'd attacked the northern part of Israel, and they'd gone. So uh, the uh, Israel at that time was divided into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, which was just basically uh, Judah, uh, Jer Jerusalem, Judah. So the Assyrians had come and attacked the northern kingdom. The Babylonian Empire. So the Assyrians then were overtaken by the Babylonians, the Babylonian emperor, Nebuchadnezzar. He came down south, he came to Jerusalem, and he attacked Jerusalem. That's the time we read about Daniel being taken, along with the other Jewish people, taken captive to Babylon. They're there, which would be modern-day Iraq and that region around Iraq. Now, what happened was after the Babylonians, so Daniel prophesied. So Daniel is living in this time, Babylonian time, and God is giving him vision about the future empires. So, and we will see that today in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel foretells in Daniel chapter 2 that the Babylonian empire will be overthrown 
and will be overtaken by other empires, the Medo-Persian. So he foretold this, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, uh, and then the Roman Empire, right? The Roman, let me just highlight this here. So Daniel, act, while living here during the Babylonian Empire time, he prophesies ahead of time about the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Now, Daniel never lived to see this. That means he died during the Persian Empire. So he lived to see what happened. He lived to see the Medes take over. He lived to see the Persians take over. And then he died. He never saw the Greek Empire. He never saw the Roman Empire. Now, we, for us, it is looking back at his history. But when Daniel was prophesying, he was speaking into the future. right? So he spoke ahead of time. And he prophesied about these coming empires. He even foretold what would happen to the Macedonian, the Greek empire. He foretold that this empire was going to be divided into four pieces. It happened exactly. Now, he never lived to see that, but it happened exactly. And he spoke ahead of time about the Roman Empire and so on. Now, it's for us. Looking back, we can put this down and say, historically, this is what happened. But what is amazing is Daniel living in the Babylonian time of the Babylonian Empire, he looked ahead and he foretold all these things and more and more, which we will look at. Okay, so this is very interesting. Now, we've put this down here as history, but remember, Daniel spoke about it looking into the future. Now, uh, of course, in looking at this, uh, uh, the empire, the division of the empires, we take uh, a, a dispensational view. We look at them and, un and understand the unfolding of Daniel uh, as time periods, and which we will explain, uh, you know, how these, these time periods are divided. Uh, um, and we will talk about historical time periods, meaning things that have already happened. And we'll talk about time periods to come, right, uh, which are out in the future. So we find both time periods or dispensations in the book of Daniel, and we will explain that as we read through. Now, the same historical information, uh, I'm giving a little bit more information here, which you probably have seen, we saw earlier in our second year course, that means just to know what these people did, because uh, you, we will find that uh, some of these things, some of, I mean, this is all historical information, just for us to, just as information, that some of these things were actually foretold. So what Alexander the Great, the Macedonian or the Greek empire, what would happen to him? Daniel foretold that. The Seleucid empire and what they would do Daniel foretold that. We will read in Daniel's Daniel chapter 11 in quite detail. He foretold that. And so it's interesting to have this historical information. Remember, when Daniel was prophesying or having visions, it was all out in the future. Today we can look back and say, hey, Daniel spoke about it around 500 BC. And here, about 100, 160 BC, those things actually happened okay so what happens to this alexander the great macedonian empire what happened during the seleucid empire daniel foretold and that is of interest to us okay so now we are ready that was quick introduction to daniel now we are ready to actually begin reading the book of daniel and we're going to go through it um, chapter by chapter, I'd like to request everybody to, you know, be involved. Um, any questions as far as the introduction is concerned before we start reading Daniel chapter 2? Any questions, please? Everybody with me so far? Okay. Okay. All right. Feel free to ask any questions. All right. 
So now let's go to, uh, let's open our Bibles. We need to keep our Bibles in front of us. We're all going to read the scriptures. Daniel chapter 2. And uh, we're only going to focus on the prophetic portions of scripture, right? Uh, we're not going to read the historical part. Those are stories uh, many of us are familiar with. Uh, so Daniel chapter 2, we're going to start from verse 31 till verse 49. So uh, just as a background, Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar wakes up one day and uh, he realizes he's had a dream. Problem, he doesn't remember the dream. So he sends word saying, hey, he calls all his wise men and Daniel was and his friends were among the wise men in the court of Nebuchadnezzar. So he says, you have to tell me what my dream was and you have to give me the interpretation. And otherwise, all the wise men are going to be killed. We know the story. So Daniel, that's where Daniel steps in. He tells the, the, the captain or the captain of the army, if you will, say, hey, just give me one, one night. Just give me one, you know, I'll be back with the an answer tomorrow. So that night, Daniel and his friend and, and the four, three friends, they, they all go and pray. And uh, God reveals it to Daniel. Uh, uh, in the night, and Daniel goes back to King Nebuchadnezzar the next day, right? And he tells the king the dream, and then he helps the king with the interpretation. And that's where we're going to pick up in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 to 49. Uh, maybe uh, we'll just, uh, you know, to read three verses each. Um, we'll just go through this quickly. Um, three verses each, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31 to 49, please. Let's read. Your Majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and, and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bone, its legs of bone, uh, sorry, its legs of iron, its feet partially of iron and partially of baked of clay. Um, yeah. Verse 34 next, 34. One. While, while, yeah. yes, okay. while you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It stuck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. You want me to continue? Uh, somebody else can read the next three verses. Thank you, uh, Shri Kumar. Uh, the whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace, like a chaff on a trashing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was a dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your Majesty, you're the greatest of the kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereign, sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. Next three verses, somebody, please. Thank you, Asha. And wherever the children of man dwell, or the beast of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. Inasmuch as iron break in pieces and shatter everything, and like iron uh, that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Yes, verse 41 onwards. Thank you, Abhishek. Just, just as 41 says, just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it even as you saw iron mixed with clay as the toes were partly iron and partly clay so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle 
And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. Thank you, sir. Next three verses, somebody. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold, and the great God had made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. The king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. Thank you. Next, uh, 47, 49, somebody please. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets. Seeing you could reveal this secret, then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Thank you. So, very interesting. Now, what is revealed in Daniel chapter 2 becomes the basis of all that's going to come in the succeeding prophetic revelation in the book of Daniel, right? So this is like the outline. And then based on, in the succeeding chapters, five, six, seven, and so on, addition, more information is being added to this and things are being expanded, elaborated, right? So understanding chapter two, uh, becomes like the starting point, the foundation for the rest of the book of Daniel. Now, it is very simple. So what does he see? Uh, let me just share the notes here so you could uh, follow along as I talk. He sees, uh, so Daniel reveals to Nebuchadnezzar, of course God revealed to Daniel, that he sees this big image, the head of gold. Then the top part, the body part, is silver. Then the lower part, the, uh, the belly and the thighs of brass. And so this is in verse 32, thighs of bronze. Legs of iron. And then the feet is iron and clay loosely mixed. Now, iron and clay um, cannot hold together very easily, right? You, you, you cannot hold together. So it's loosely mixed. And then uh, there are, of course, two feet means 10 toes. And then there's a huge rock, but it is not cut off by human hands. That means it is from heaven. It's not from earth. It's not human, it's divine. It's not earthly, it's heavenly. And that stone comes and it crushes this whole image, completely crushes it. And this rock becomes a huge mountain. Okay, so that's the dream Nebuchadnezzar had. Yeah, everyone with me? And I think we'll have a little picture of this somewhere the notes but that's the picture gold silver bronze our feet of iron toes iron and clay mix uh, sorry feet iron and clay mixed legs of iron feet are 
and in clay mix, ten toes. Rock, not made by hands, comes from heaven, crushes all this, and becomes a big mountain. That's the dream. Now, Daniel interprets the dream. What are some of the things we see revealed to us here in chapter 2? What we see revealed to us is, Daniel interprets and says, he's talking about kingdoms, he's talking about empires, because he says, king, that head of gold is you. So Daniel says this, verse 38, you are this head of gold, you. But after you will arise another kingdom, verse 39. So each part of this image represents a kingdom or an empire. Now obviously an empire is made up of kings and rulers or emperors. So what Daniel is saying is the head represents the Babylonian Empire. So when he's pointing to Nebuchadnezzar, he's not speaking specifically of just him as an individual, because the rest of it we know. He's talking about kingdoms, empires. So therefore the gold part of this represents the Babylonian Empire. And then he says these other parts are representing empires that are going to come after you. So the silver, the chest and arms of silver, are representing another empire. Now Daniel does not specify what that empire is. That will come in succeeding chapters. Right. So this is like an outline. As we progress in the book of Daniel, he begins to specify who's who's going to come. Okay. But right now it's like an outline. So he's saying there's going to be another empire. That's verse 39, another kingdom. They'll be inferior to you, but they're going to overthrow the Babylonian empire. They will, they will rise up after the Babylon. And then there'll be another one, which represents the bronze, the belly and the thighs of bronze. Now, I have mentioned who these empires are and the dates. That's because we, we, we know it now. Right? But in Daniel chapter 2, as Daniel was speaking, he didn't know who these were, uh, and he didn't mention them by name, but we know it. And then it comes later on in the succeeding chapters. Okay, But it's I, we can put it down now because we have the information. So he says there's a third kingdom, a third empire made of uh, brass. That's the Greek empire. Then there's going to be a fourth empire legs of iron very powerful as you will see in the subsequent chapters daniel says that empire is going to be very powerful okay it really expanded then what will happen is after that there'll be feet of iron and clay loosely mixed feet of iron iron represents the roman empire so there is a mix of the roman empire with Clay, clay represents all the other mixed races. So they're going to mix, intermingle. Um, so today when you look at Europe, Europe is like this. It belonged to the Roman Empire, predominantly, but now it's all mixed, it's all loosely held. There's a mix of what was belonging to the Roman Empire with all the other peoples. So it's a loosely held region, iron and clay. From there will come ten leaders, ten toes. You will see later on uh, here in Daniel, in Daniel 2 is referred to as ten toes. In uh, other places the same is referred to as ten horns or ten kings. You'll, you know, you'll see this later. But the ten toes right now we're looking at it, ten toes. And then he says, in the days of these kings, verse 44, interesting, now he's giving us a clue about the timing. In the days of these kings, when these ten leaders are rising from this region that is loosely held as a mix of iron and clay, 
in the days of these kings something is going to happen a rock from heaven is going to strike that means there's going to be an invasion of this heavenly kingdom and it is going to overpower all previously held kingdoms and he says God himself will set up his kingdom on the earth and that is the kingdom of the Messiah okay I know it's supposed to, to be a break time so let me pause here um, and, and, and just think about this and we will come back to and just continue this and take up any questions okay so 10 minutes we'll be back We'll continue with this. Thank you.